All right, here we go. Okay, 1952, here we come. And you know what's freaky? We're, I'm sitting on a gas tank. Can't believe it. Now, you're the only person to drive this besides me. How's that? All right. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. There we go. Yoo-hoo. Isn't this amazing? Should I power shift? <laughs> <laughs> Nick's Garage is supported by Atlas Equipment and K-Tool International. Recently, a very special vehicle came to Nick's Garage. This little Jeep might not have the kind of horsepower and torque that we're used to seeing here, but the respect and memory that it inspires are undeniable. Nick and his team were honored to be asked to help maintain such an important machine. And we thank its new owner for the work he does to respect and remember our troops. We learned a great deal the day we met Paul and his 1952 Willis M38. And we're pleased to share some of our experience with you. Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to Nick's Garage. You know, we've been working with a lot of American muscle cars, and of course, luxury cars here and there, but today, we got something special. We got something that's been around in the wars for many, many years. And I have someone who brought it in, Paul. Paul, come right in here. It's a pleasure to see thank you. Thank you, Nick, for and the invitation. Course, thank you, okay. it's my pleasure. And this is something totally different from what we're used to working with. And I heard you were driving, uh, down in the Laval somewhere, and then the, the vehicle just yeah. stopped like that. Yeah. And uh, we were trying to figure out what the problem is, so we figured it out, we're gonna fix it. But in the meantime, what is this vehicle all about? Can you tell us? Okay, I'll, I'll give you some background. Okay, so, go ahead. Both my grandfathers lost their brothers in World War I. Our family names engraved in the Vimy Ridge Monument. Eight served in World War II, we lost many more. Uh, my cousin Scotty was actually killed on Remembrance Day, 11 November, 1943. Yes, we served in Korea as well, lucky no casualties. Myself, two years, Royal Montreal Regiment, Infantry, Cadet Corps 29. And uh, I have a son now who's an officer serving in the armed forces. So that's four generations. Four generations. So many years ago, 2009, our family was at the Canadian War Museum and we witnessed a World War II veteran, handsome gentleman, six foot ramrod straight, okay. dark blue blazer, gray flannel pants with the crease you could cut through butter with. His black boots were so highly polished, you could see your face in them. Wow. And he was standing there, shoulders back, chest out. It's just World War II vet and so proud. All his medals. All he had on his little tray was a bowl of soup and a cup of coffee. Canadian War Museum in the mess. Wow. And he didn't have enough money to pay for it. Okay. That poor guy was red like a tomato, put his head down. It was heartbreaking. So my family and I began a program called Operation Veteran whereby any veteran now going to the Canadian Museum, Canadian War Museum in Ottawa, receives a complimentary meal. So they get a voucher. It used to be $11 for 11 November. We've recently increased it to $20. Now, why $20? Well, if you look at the back of a $20 bill, okay. you're gonna see the Vimy Ridge Monument. Okay, so it's right. perfect. It covers the cost of a nice meal for a veteran at the War Museum. Of course. Um, so that led me to begin inviting students to Ottawa on Remembrance Day. Nice. So on 11 November at 8 o'clock, we have guest speakers now. We've had the Minister of Veterans Affairs, Minister of Defense. Uh, we've had the President of the Royal Canadian Legion. These individuals are there every year, and so we're blessed to have them. Um, but I found that some of the most important guest speakers are students. The students come from schools across Canada. Okay. Um, and we'll give them a subject material. So last year in Quebec, it was Sergeant Leo Major, French Canadian, most highly decorated hero in World War II for Canada. Okay. He fought in Second World War, liberated a Dutch town all by himself, unbelievable. And he also served in Korea. So, wonderful individual. And so we make videos and we put it on the internet now. Wow. 
and we'll put the videos together into a one hour program. We'll call it Operation Remembrance. Okay. And it's our own program now. This has guys. nothing to do with the War Museum. This is us, teachers, education, teaching kids to love, honor, and respect our veterans, which is so incredibly important. Very. So okay. Operation Remembrance, okay. 11 Days of Remembrance, starts on the 1st of November. Usually the Governor General does, um, I do the intro, I'm the host, the Governor General says a few words, and then the President of the Royal Canadian Legion, Mr. Booth, Julian says a few words. Every day has a different subject. And day 11, the Minister of Veterans Affairs likes, uh, has an address. And then we usually find elementary schools to do the poem for the fallen okay. or in Flanders Fields. I'd like to finish on that high point. Wow. And so this is all about education, education, education. The legion and respect for old soldiers runs deep in Paul's family. But he's also been on the receiving end of that kind of respect. Now, 15 years ago, I was invited to Holland. Holland. I wore my legion uniform. I represented the Royal Canadian Legion on the Dutch National Liberation Day. Okay. So I was there May 4, May 5. When I was in Holland, uh, I was offered a Jeep. And there was a big MP sitting next to me to see how well I drove the vehicle. And I turned right on the bicycle path. Okay. Not on the street itself. Okay. So the MP yelled at me. He said, get out of the Jeep and we will assign you a driver from now on. Okay. And so I had a <laughs> World War II Jeep, an MB Willis Jeep with a driver. And my job was smile, and wave, wait. shake hands with the Dutch people because they love Canadians. When you go back to Holland and you're sitting in the Jeep waving to people and then you see these young mothers come up to you and they hand their baby to you. And they say, thank you, Canada. And I said, look, I didn't serve in World War II. And they said, it's not the point. You are a Canadian. You liberated our country. More Canadians were killed in Holland in World War II than Normandy, France, Belgium, or in Germany. This is where we went really? to fight. And this is where we're buried. Over 7,000 Canadian soldiers are buried in Holland. People don't know that. I but when, know you're in, when you're in a parade, and you're wearing a Canadian uniform, and you're in a WC Dodge truck, or you're in a Willis MB Jeep like this with okay. a Canadian flag, the people come up to you. I wish every Canadian student could travel to Holland once in their lifetime and see the outpouring of love and respect that the Dutch have for Canadians. Holland? Holland, Netherlands, yep. Wow. And so this love of a Jeep Okay, that's what I started to grow in. on it, and I was so happy. Well, you know, yeah. after hearing all this, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, I'm blessed. I did not know that. Yeah. And so um, I was very lucky. I joined the American Vehicle Preservation Association. Okay. And then they told me, did you know in Ontario there's the Ontario branch? I said, no. So last year I went, I was a guest in Odessa, Ontario. It's a two-day event. They bring in Sherman tanks. Wow. They had NBs from World War II. They got MCs like mine from Korea. Uh, they have an ILTIS. They brought in Hummers. They've got APCs, armored personnel carriers from the Canadian military and private collectors. When you see a Sherman tank firing blanks from its main cannon and the, four, and the 50 calibers are firing, it's absolutely awesome. And then you see the German Panzers responding. It's a wonderful event. And so last year I mentioned to the president, Mr. Les Fisher, I'm a new member. I would be honored if I had the opportunity to buy a vehicle like this so that I can maintain it for the next generation. Of course. It's not about ownership. It's about preservation for the future, for the, the future Canadian students to learn about our country. I'm learning system. stuff right now with yeah. you. So I was lucky. I, I got a phone call from a gentleman. Uh, I won't mention his name. He has a private collection. What's interesting is he asked me what I did. And I told him, well, I was a specialist in the field of dentistry. I did surgery for 42 years. And he said, I don't care, it's irrelevant. I said, uh, what did, what, tell me more about yourself. I said, uh, well, I went to high school like everybody else and I went to McGill. He said, I don't care about that. I wanna know your background. So I said, okay, my two grandfathers lost their brothers in World War I. He said, that's what I wanna know. On that condition, I will sell you this Jeep. So he, okay, I said, that, that is a smart man. Yeah. Selling a vehicle yeah. for a good reason, for a good reason. not just to yeah. anybody. And he was very generous. And you're the right person. Yeah. 
I said, sir, I know you've got a World War II Jeep here and you've got the Korean War Jeep and I know you have access with your connections to other vehicles. I put four kids through school and university. I'm no millionaire, I don't own a factory. I, I only have limited funds like everyone else. He said, don't worry about it. Can you afford this price if you promise to maintain this vehicle? Okay. I said, yes, sir. I said, by the way, my wife is Dutch. Her grandfather fought the Japanese in 1939. He was in the Navy and he actually blew up his own ship rather than surrender to the Japanese fleet. Really? And many, Jap many Dutch captains lost their lives because mm. of this. So my wife's father was a young boy and he had two younger sons, brothers. They were put into a Japanese camp. At the end of the war, that commanding officer was actually executed for crimes against the children and the, way and the wives, crimes against humanity. So my wife and I understand there is a love of our Canadian military, a love of history. We have a responsibility to protect this vehicle, maintain this vehicle. The responsibility to protect and maintain a meaningful vehicle is something that Nick understands very well. And as soon as Paul called the shop and told him he had a problem with the 52 Jeep, Nick knew he had to sign up for the mission. You know that we work with old cars here. Yeah. And of course, unfortunately, this is a 1952. 1952. And you, you know, I've never worked on okay. one of these, right? <laughs> okay. But it's always a challenge for me to work on these. Yeah. It is old school and uh, I love to challenge them. And from what I hear from you, what you've done, mm. This, dear, this vehicle deserves the best. Thank you. There's nothing more than that. Well, this is the best. I've been told I was given Nick's name by many people. And you know, Paul came in a few weeks ago and mentioned that uh, he has a 52 Jeep and said that uh, it broke down while he was driving. And he came by and asked me if I could take a look at it. So the day came, today we got towed in and he asked me to check it out and see what uh, is the problem with it. And we took a fast look at it and we figured out that the problem is the fuel pump. There's no fuel going to the carburetor. But besides that, Let's have a little introduction on the vehicle itself. Paul, what kind of a vehicle it is exactly? Okay, now I'm not an expert. I took delivery of the vehicle on the 1st of May. So I've been learning about it very slowly but surely. Number one, it's a 1952 Willis M38. M stands for military. It's waterproof. What? It was built for the Korean War to be able to actually come off a ship or to go through a stream. Uh, four you, feet of water? You can go through this up to four feet of water, up more or less. Up to four feet of water. It's also, the official name is a 1952 Willis M38 CDN, Canadian. In the United States, they made th uh, 65,000 of these vehicles, I believe. In Canada, Ford Motor Company was allowed to make, I think they made 2,600 of these under a uh, franchise from Willis in the States. So Ford Motor Company assembled them on their plant. Yeah, they, Ford this Jeep was, Willis. This was built in Canada. Wow, I didn't know that. So what's nice about this vehicle is in World War II, you had the MB. Winston Churchill declared that one of the secret weapons the Allies had to win the war was the, was the Jeep, the Willis Jeep. For the Korean War, they made this a little bigger, a little higher. In World War II, the average driver was what, 18, 19 years old? Here we are. And they're all, they look like you. They're in good shape, Nick. Probably, yes. But. Don't look at me now, but they, then. They okay. found that, that as you get a little bit bigger, you can't fit in the driver's so seat of the MB. So they made the Jeeps a little bigger, more comfortable. This is the same age, the same engine as, as the MB Jeep 1940, in the 40s. Uh, but it's a little higher. And this is open. So it's just like in the 19, World War II Jeeps. This is over. The newer models have a curve. The Canadian, that stands for the 1st Canadian Division, I was told. Over there, the 2nd Armored, I was told. I don't know who had it. I just know it was 2nd Armored. And in the middle, I was told that the blue and the diamond stands for headquarters. So it's a very important vehicle. It was used primarily to drive around officers, we think. Okay. So this vehicle was purchased from Ford. Um, it was sent, we have documents that say Lord Strathcona Armored, which is Lord, Lord Strathcona Horse, which is an armored division in Canada. So it was used in Canada during the Cold War. Was it sent to Germany and used in Germany? I don't know. 
But, you know, they were designed to go anywhere in the world, actually. It goes anywhere in the world. What's kind of cool, one of the things I like the best is you've got these beautiful big support I noticed you've got hooks, roof, like this, this vehicle is an all-purpose vehicle. This is made, like in World War II, to be able to be pushed out of an aircraft and come down on a, on a parachute, on a pellet. What was that again? These, air, these Jeeps were made light enough to be pushed out of a, an aircraft okay. and on, down on the parachute to wherever, whatever terrain you needed to fight on. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. So it's well reinforced, well built. As ruggedly as the little vehicles were built, they weren't expected to last very long in service. I was told by a veteran that in World War II, the life expectancy of a Jeep was two months because of the war. Two months. These were battered in warfare. They were abused. They were not maintained. I mean, you're trying to win a war. Of course. You're worried about surviving. You're not worried about maintaining the Jeep. So here we are 60 years later or so. Or so. Almost 80. Almost 80 years old for World War II. This is 80? 71 years old now. That's right. That's yeah. right. This is 71 years old. 71 years old. Yeah. Well, it's in good shape from what I see. That's, it was it's well the, maintained. Of course, it also stayed away from the battlefield. Yeah. Which it's, a lot of its brothers were in action. Yeah. So um, in, in the Korean War, they took the old MB Jeeps from World War II and they just got rid of them. They used them. Okay. But then they were rounding out and they needed something better and stronger. Okay. And this is when this vehicle was created. And uh, from what I know, yeah. this vehicle has a lot of options. The one option they offered back then was a heater for the winter. Heater? And it fit here, apparently. Oh, okay. And you poured gas into it. Gasoline. And apparently the Jeeps would catch on fire. So it wasn't That's, a safe option. No, <laughs> so, no safety features then. No. So after losing many Jeeps, apparently, they stopped offering that oh, option. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah. So I was told by the owner, this number here... This was no longer used. I was told this was put on. It was used in World War II, but this didn't, wasn't used in the Korean War. This number apparently should be down here. For being authentic, it was down here. Okay. Okay. Um, but I took delivery like this. So, so 52 stood for? 52, 1952, the year it was the built. The year of the vehicle. Three stands for um, quarter ton vehicles. Quarter ton. Okay. Okay. Zero means no options. No options. Okay. okay. Eight, six, nine. Apparently, this is number eight, six, nine in, in that batch that was built. So, sequential vehicle number. Yeah. And Zero here, number. if you look at the frame. It's on the frame right here, right? If you look on the frame in the support here. Yeah, it's right here. 52-30-869. Eight, six, nine. There it is. So, it's an original vehicle. It comes back to muscle cars. You know, they got serial numbers on the frame, just like 1952. So here you've got blackout lights, in case you're wondering. So you've got your main lights, you've got blackout lights. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm just giving you an idea. Here, with Nick, if you can help me. Sure. We'll open the front. So this hasn't changed since the day they were built. It pops up. So you have a little four-cylinder engine. This is 60 horsepower. That's 60? it. 60? 60 horsepower? horsepower. Okay. You don't go on the highway. It's 71 years old. You don't want to abuse it. My top speed I've hit so far is 35 miles an hour, but the Jeep is skittish. Okay. And so I'll, you get nervous because you're, you're driving it and you're skidding like this. So we went up a, a little hill, not a, not a, a big one, yes. just a little rise. We sort of slowed down to about 30 miles an hour. So and when we got to the top of the hill and we came down the other side, with the wind pushing us, we hit 40 miles an hour. That was it. You know, Paul, I would think at a point and give us some more horsepower if you wish. <laughs> no, but this is original. We're going to leave it like this. So, okay. And from what I heard, it runs on 24 volts. Yeah, we've got two batteries. Two batteries. First battery here. And Where is this, this is the cable. This is the big, thick cable. It's a connection. There's a big connection which runs into the second battery, which is here. Wow. So in other words, they're connected in series. Yeah. Equals 24 volts. Yeah. There we go. There it is. Okay, so there's one battery and the other one's in the back. So they're connected in series yeah. and equals 24 volts. And this was factory? This is all factory from what I understand. Wow. Instead of writing it on the red of your cap, they put it on the hood. This is the cooling systems under pressure. In other words, not just the cap, the hose, the radiator, or whatever is the... Uh... You can see everything here is original. Nothing was touched. And this big canister here is the oil filter. That's and that... That's the oil filter, right? Yeah, Paul? and that's your air filter. Air filter. And which uses oil as well. 
That's right. Just like the older vehicles. Okay. Now I have a snorkel because this Jeep was made to go into water. Yes. So if I attach the snorkel through here, okay, I'll put this down. So the snorkel comes through here. Okay. Attaches in there. From the air cleaner? Comes through here. And then it goes above it the roof. It comes up here. Wow. I just didn't put it on because it's, I, it won't fit in my garage otherwise. No, but just to let our viewers know that yeah. this vehicle can drive under four feet of water. Yeah. And of course, all the wiring is uh, rubber tight, uh, watertight. The water uh, is waterproof. The engine's I, waterproof. I can't believe it. I, I if, can't believe it. if your viewers want to see, everything here is reinforced. I noticed. Everything's, here's I, I, your spark plugs. I, They're I, deep in the engine. I was surprised that the uh, wiring is screwed onto the spark plug yeah. and it's airtight. It's waterproof. It's waterproof. built to go Literally, off a landing craft, into the water, get on the road and drive it. That's right, exactly. Yeah. You had all these youngsters yeah. driving off a, a landing craft, They're going through water, dodging bullets. <laughs> Man, they went through hell. It's kind of scary. It now, is. It is. The roof. And, okay, go ahead. If this wasn't on, I could actually take the windshield. It, it lies flat on this. On this wood. On and the this wood. Is wood. And then I tie it down with this. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And I heard it comes with a handbag with the tools. Yes, I've got. Yeah, I'll bring this out and I'll bring it on the wood. So this is the mechanic's handbag that they were issued. And it opens up like this. And every Jeep had one of these. Wow, everything's numbered also. And everything's numbered, and so they know exactly what they need to maintain this vehicle. Now it says here, it's hard to, I was laughing, but it says thread, cotton, adhesive, needles for cell makers. Let's see that. We open this up, and they actually supply needles so you can fix the canvas with thread, or your seats, or whatever you, anything with canvas, you got, then you've, I guess this is to make sure you don't stab your finger. I'm not sure. <laughs> and of course, some of the tools are missing. Now the tools are missing. I, I'm going to try and buy them with time. And it also comes with a manual. And you open this, and here's the original owner's manual from 1952. Wow, it's a big book. And if you open up, here's the original booklets, and you can see Lord Strathcona Horse, which is a Canadian armor division. And if you go through the booklet, it's all the original documents. Just think, 71 years old. I have another book like this as well, and the other booklet is how to fix the frame of the vehicle. So everything is in there from A to Z. So every mechanic, every team was given this equipment and told not to lose it. So this is uh, wonderful. And, and I notice it's equipped with some things when you're on the road. You got a... Uh, yeah. Now, yeah, in World War II, yeah. you had your shovel and you had your axe okay. on the driver's side. On the driver's side, yeah. okay. In the Korean War, the M38 model, they put it on the passenger side. Now, you can see this is, there's big steel cleats. This is solid in place. This is an axe, by the way, so okay. it's well protected. You can't see it here, but this, this is all reinforced it, steel to protect it, the axe. It and sure to, looks like an axe to me. Yeah. And let me ask you something. This storage rack what goes there right in front of the dash the storage rack you see there is to keep your garant rifle okay so everyone had your your rifle and it was made to put your carbine so if you're driving somewhere and you come under fire and, and here's the spring and, this, and what is this rod and here i keep this side of the jeep you can see the number 30869 matches the number on the front of the vehicle. Okay, so this is an antenna. Yep, and if... Does you, it work with the radio on the vehicle? Yep, if you want to help me, Nick, there's two okay. more parts in there. Okay. Why, is this long or what? I thought my antenna was tall on my car. It's a telescopic also. It's, 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 it screws in quite... Okay, thank God we have a high ceiling. Here yeah. we go. And that screws in. You know, when I watch these war movies, <laughs> I see some of these uh, antennas yeah. on the Jeep. In the, if you're in a field, in an open field, yes. you need your radio, you extend it. If you're driving where there's traffic, this actually bends down. And soldiers are very, very smart. 
So you jury rigged this. So now if you're in a location where you don't want to be identified too I was too just readily, about to ask you what that rope stood for. Yeah. So you now can I just, know. you tie it down. Now you can drive with this. Good old fashioned Canadian army. Think on their feet. You tie it down so you don't break your antenna. And this is for the radio on board. And here's your radio. This radio is, not, is from the Korean War and it functions. You can take this off. You can turn on the radio. You can fiddle with the frequencies and you're good to go. Now, I was told that apparently you need a ham license in Canada if you want to turn on the power and talk to people. Um, the previous owner told me he would turn it on and drive down the street. He picks up the uh, baby walkie-talkies in the house sometimes. This is, it came in the Jeep, and I've never did, touched it. Did the radio come in every Jeep or some specific uh, I'm, units? I'm not sure. I, I, like I'm, you said, maybe this was call, uh, uh, hauling officers and... Uh, it could um, be just for officers. I honestly don't know. I just okay. know I was told this came okay. with, the, with the Jeep. So you got one with the radio. That's good. I, I got one you, with the radio. I don't yeah. think the oil came with it, but uh, yeah. it's unique that you have it. It's nice. And it's a three-speed manual transmission? Three-speed manual transmission. Four cylinder. Yeah. Now, if I had known, I, I would have brought the doors because I have the doors that fit in here. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. And back here. I would drive it without the doors. <laughs> I don't use the doors. And what's in this bike? These are the canvas sides. Yeah, do this. This comes forward. There's a little storage case under here. I keep my jack in there. Okay. I keep my I, jack in there. I did not see that. Yeah. Now these were see, added, on, uh, added on by the previous owner. I don't think they had seat belts then. No, they're not original. Okay. <laughs> but okay. we that added them on. But this just pulls out and then once okay. your door is in place, you can just strap this in quite easily. And you have windows, plastic windows? Plastic or windows, okay. yeah. You, you can't see that well. It's a true blue war vehicle, that's for sure. And this Military use. is absolutely massive. Massive, eh? This is made. And this covers the whole Jeep? It's made to cover the Jeep, specifically over the front, because the sunlight glints off your window. Oh, yes. So it's made to cover the front and keep the reflections off. Wow. So I tried using it this summer. Uh, it did the trick. We, we put it over the Jeep. Okay. But it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to clean up and put it away because okay, this so stuff... Okay, so we'll leave it for another Yeah, I, I put it on the Jeep, but it takes forever to get it back in. And I'm just wondering, does that mean tire pressure 25 pounds? Yes, tire okay. pressure 25 pounds. You can't make a mistake on that. No. Tube type. Tube tires, yeah. Tube type, I'm sure. But right now they're tubeless, <laughs> but they were tube type then. And then what's interesting is you've got your blackout lights. This one's here. Yeah. Okay. And if you leave, look under the Jeep, you'll see on the rear axle, it's white. There's a little light, like a strobe. So when you're driving in the fields at night. Or with a convoy. You turn a convoy light on, there's a little flash. So the vehicles behind me, behind you, follow the little flashing lights. Without you have, the headlights. Without the headlights, hey, no brake lights, not, everything's off. And to show you how smart they were, people make mistakes. We all know that. So, this is the switch. This is the switch for your lights. And you can see they're locked in place. I can't do anything. So, if you're driving at night and you're tired and you put on your headlights, the bad guys will see you. So, by Express, you have to unlock this. And once you unlock it, you can turn on your lights now. Safety feature. Safety feature built in. This is your emergency brake. Pull it out. The fellow who sold it to me said, turn it this way. There said, if, you, if you hear it, you know it's on. Okay. And then here, you've got your throttle, you've got your choke. So there's a sequence. You have to get the choke out fully when the engine's cold. You Manual have to choke. Get your throttle out. I see it also has a first aid kit on board. First aid kit, but I believe they soldered it closed for now. Okay. And then in here, you got your little glove box. Pretty small, eh? That's, there's nothing there. I just, I've got a golden retriever. So for my golden retriever, I have safety glasses and I got a little habit. So when I don't have the roof on, I want to make sure he doesn't get bugs in his eyes oh, or yeah. a stone. Okay. So, so I protect I, my so dog. So riding a motorcycle. Yeah. With the windshield down. That's it. Uh, 
And then there's a little switch here. If you open this up, there's a vacuum and it's supposed to make your windshield wipers work. I was told it never works. So this is how you keep your windows clean when it's raining. It's manual. You do it by hand. This is state of the art, 1952 in the war jeep. You know, this never fails. <laughs> it never fails. So it's not like today. Very, very impressive. It's a very, very basic very vehicle. Very impressive. Three speed, three speed transmission. There's no overdrive. And this okay. is the four wheel drive? This is four wheel drive, four high or four low. And this. Oh, okay, go ahead. I was simply told never use this. <laughs> is it to make it a two wheel drive to a four wheel drive? Uh, yeah, it locks apparently or unlocks. The, the whole mechanism. I was told, don't play with it. You it's don't got a transfer it. case. Yes. Okay. So, I'm sure it's that. Two wheel, four wheel drive. Yeah. And this is four low, four high. That's it. Okay. So Make I was sense. told, always leave it here. Just don't play around too much I've with it. I've never seen a rear view mirror round. <laughs> I've never seen this. I'll just check that out. I've never seen it. And this apparently is for cold weather in the Arctic. Okay. This pump, you're supposed to pump it twice. So it really floods the engine with gas. Are you kidding? And you oh, oh, yes, I saw it in the front. I was yeah. wondering what it was. I thought that was, I originally thought, I thought it was the vacuum Ex for the windshield wipers. Then I was reading the owner's manual. So it's they had the pump this to get gas into the engine when it's minus I 25, minus I 30. noticed yeah. another fuel line from the fuel pump to your intake manifold, mm. and it, be, it had a leakage going inside. So that's what it's for. That's what it's for. Wow. Mm. So extra fuel for cold weather. Extra fuel for cold weather. Beautiful. Yeah. These are the original plates from Ford of Canada when they built it in 1952. And it comes in every vehicle. Yeah, so there's your transfer case, there's your transmission, gives you wiring diagrams, your Everything. tire pressures. You got your original serial number made in Canada. And it's all miles per hour, of course, back then. Nick is very thankful to Paul for the education on this brave little Jeep and he's looking forward to getting it back on the road for him soon. Paul's bought it here because it's not running, because he was driving it not long ago, he was driving it down uh, the boulevard, and yeah. it just stalled on you. It stalled on me. So yeah. our job is here is to get it back on the road, and we just got it today. We're gonna start looking at it. I looked at a couple of things, and from what I see, there seems to be no fuel going to the carburetor. Okay. So our job is now to open his notebooks that he brought in, the shop manuals, and go through them, your fuel pump is totally different. It's got a humongous cover on it. It's got four fuel lines on it for 1952, mm. which I don't know what it stands for, what it does. Mm. So right now I'm gonna look at it, go through the shop mm. manual. Manny was asking me, let's look into it. And uh, he's here tonight. So we're gonna look at it and uh, get it going so you can drive it back and enjoy it. Thank you, see, that's why I trust Nick. Paul, it was an honor meeting you here today. And thank you for the history. You're welcome. And I've got a lot more to learn. <laughs> we both do. Thank you. What's that movie in Casablanca? This is the beginning of a wonderful relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's a long way from the usual big block muscle car business at the shop, Nick and Manny couldn't wait to get wrenching on the 52. It wasn't long before they'd tracked down the issue with the fuel pump, sniffed out some replacement parts, and were ready to ask Paul back to the shop to take the Jeep out for a spin. All right, let's go for a ride. I've never been into a 52 Willis. Okay, Paul, let's go for a ride. Man, it makes you feel like you're in the army. I just love this vehicle. <laughs> it is so enjoyable. I love it. It's like driving a piece of history. It is. It is. It's... This vehicle is older than I am. What's funny is that it's only 60 horsepower. It's not that much. 60 but horsepower. But it gets the job done. Well, that's what they were built for. It was built for this. It's too bad we don't have mud and ditches here. Oh, yeah. Because I'd take you through the fields and through the mud. You know what? I'd like to go through four feet of water. Four feet of water. <laughs> Wear your bathing suit then. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Now, that's a, a little sports car with a big engine. It is. But this it is. is history. This is four-cylinder, 60 horsepower. 
And as it's printed on the dash, it's 45 so. miles an hour maximum. See, it's right there on the dash. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Wow. On a military base, 25 miles an hour maximum. They've, they've even written a 25 PSI on the tires on every yeah. fender. So it's, it's quite lovely. It is. So lovely. it's a three speed. Standard speed. shift, standard steering wheel, standard brakes. Nothing power. Nothing power. Very, very, very basic vehicle. Now, Let's this guy's backing up. Let's go around the corner a little bit. There we go. So, listen to the engine hum. First, pull a UE and go back down the same way, okay? Okay, we'll do a UE and we'll yeah, go right we'll back. come right here. Go through here. There we go. Yeah, this is a rough terrain, but that's what it's for, right? Yeah. Here we go. Nice. Let's jump off the sidewalk. This yeah, is what it was made for. Hey, it's pretty smooth, if you ask me. <laughs> it's quite nice. There's your turn indicator. Yes. You go left, but not like a modern car. It doesn't come off. You have to no, turn it off. No, you got it. Again. Manually turn it off. Manual turn it off. It's good. And thank you for fixing the fuel pump. Yeah. Because now that the fuel pump works, my windshield wipers work. That's right. Because in it. theory, they're manual. You do it by hand. Yeah, they're vacuum operated by the mechanical fuel pump. And so now it works again. So I'm so grateful for that. Go all the way down. I love it. So this is in third gear now. And off we go. Just smooth driving. We're going 20, 20 miles an hour on the city street, which is fine. No cruise control. No cruise control. <laughs> I can go 35 miles an hour tops. If I'm lucky, 40 on the highway. 40 wow. miles an hour is the equivalent of what? 70 kilometers an hour? Okay. So legally, I can go on the highway. But you stay in the right lane and you you literally hug the right line. That's all good. You're not there to go for uh, no. a fast spin. I'm more worried about the people who go past me because yeah. they all, they're so busy trying to watch you. There's more risk of hitting you than anything oh. else. Now, Nick. I want to do something for right. you. I would like you to drive it down the street and okay. experience a right. beautiful vehicle. All right. The parking brake is on. All right, here we go. Okay, 1952, here we come. And you know what's freaky? We're, I'm sitting on a gas tank. Can't believe it. Now, you're the only person to drive this besides me. How's is that? All right. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. There we go. You. Isn't this amazing? Should I power shift? <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine. It's smooth, man. It's smooth. It is. 71 years old. The transmission is perfect. The motor is perfect. It's like your favorite grandfather, grandmother. Absolutely healthy, perfect. It A is. little old, treat them with respect. Here we are driving some history. 1952 Willis. And you'll know, remind you of that movie MASH. After all, it wasn't Korea. That's it. This and, is, yeah. and these were built for uh, Korea. These builds came in at the end of the Korean War. So and if you watch the show called MASH, yes. at the end of World War II, a lot of these Jeeps were put in storage. When the Korean War broke out, they emptied the warehouses and Canada sent a lot of Jeeps as well. They got rid of everything that they had from World War II. This was the replacement. So it's 1952 Willis M38 built in Canada. Nice, very nice. I gotta take it for another drive. Let's go. Go ahead. Here Enjoy we go. Enjoy it. I love this little round mirror. Yeah. Not much, but it's great. Man, it makes me feel like I'm in the army. Isn't that fun? Okay, Sergeant, where are we going? Oh. In the summer, with the roof off, the canvas roof is off. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And the windshield, I can lay flat on the hood. That's what I want. That's like being on a motorcycle with no yeah, helmet. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Talk about enjoying something. No kidding. Roof off, window down, yeah. that's my way to go. Okay, here we go. Well, we'll give that truck a little bit of room. Now, we'll make a U-turn. Somebody there. Well, there's a lot of traffic for uh, this afternoon. <laughs> See, people are giving us the thumbs up as they go by. Oh, yeah, of course. This, this is, is uh, it's not a common vehicle. No, this is respect. Oh, of course. <laughs> the other day, I was on the street, and four bikers came up on my left. And I was wondering, uh-oh. Okay. And they look at me, and the fellow in the front gives me a thumbs up. And no one smiled. <laughs> but they gave me a thumbs up, and off they went down the street. Why not? Yeah, so mutual respect. 
You know, I find it kind of, I find it smooth, man. It's smooth. Really Surprisingly. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker. Now, just imagine driving like this, in the mud in the water, under motor fire, or artillery fire, yep. or machine gun fire. Absolutely terrifying. But those boys went And there's too. no protection whatsoever. There's no protection. Uh, you know what, you gotta give them, you gotta give them credit for what they went through. Give them credit for what they you went know, through. War is not something nobody likes anyway. This is a piece of history, man. This, this is a piece of history. You know, Paul, I can't thank you enough, man. Driving something like this makes me feel like I'm in the army. I'm at war. And of course, I'm uh, peace, love, and muscle cars, but uh, it's something. This is an honor to drive it. It's, it's, it's something. 1952, this vehicle was built four years before I was born. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful, amazing, yeah. just beautiful. Well, I'm privileged oh. to be able to protect oh, this vehicle and oh, maintain yeah. this vehicle. Our job is to keep it running. Yep. That's our job. And of course, uh, preserve our history. And that's one, no, that's your job. You're that's your keep, job. You're going to keep it running with me. We'll work as a team. Okay, sounds good to me. That sounds fun. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I can't believe I drove a 52 wheelies. First time in my life. Yeah. This is something, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ordinarily, as Nick's cameraman, I politely decline when clients offer rides in their cars. I appreciate the offers, but would rather enjoy the vehicles through the lens and not risk scuffing the paint or the upholstery. But when Paul kindly offered that I hop in the Jeep for one more go around the block, I could hear my grandfather, who breathed mustard gas in the trenches in World War I, and my father, a Royal Navy commando in World War II. So in their memory, I accepted Paul's offer and climbed into the back seat. Okay, hey, look, I folded myself up in here. Where we go? Over there. Oh, nice. I, I don't feel it bounce just from my weight. <laughs> I don't mind another ride, let me tell you. This is something very different I'm used to. So here we okay. go. One more ride, let's go. George, you're gonna love the ride. Collector is mash. Second. It is cool, man. That's this, cool, eh? this is totally different from a muscle car. Third. And that's it. That's all she got. Yeah, look we, at that. Look at that. We this, hit 30 miles an this, hour there. This is cool, man. <laughs> no <laughs> doors, I love it. Let's go around the block. Let's go. You have to do a full stop, because if yes. you don't, you mess your transmission. Okay. That sound, that sound of the Jeep reminds you, you know, like you're watching an army movie or a, a war movie, that's the same sound you get. It's the same wine. That's right, it's the same wine, yeah. This is too much. Guys, fun. Awesome. This is cool. Thank you for this ball. You're welcome. Oh, this is awesome, mate. Eh? Hang on, there's a bump coming up. No, oh, maybe that's a bump. Go okay. back, you're under fire from the pothole. Oh. From the enemy. <laughs> I was hoping, George, we'd hit a bump. You'd see what it was really like back there. I want to go through your nice <laughs> My wife is six foot and we hit a railroad track. Oh, the roof no, wasn't no. on, but I'll tell you, she let a whoop. She really <laughs> bounced. Awesome. They were driven through everything in the war times. Everything. What's interesting Even is I asked for an alignment to be done and I was told you don't align them. No. When you break the way that it was built, the way the transmission is placed, the way the vehicle, when you break. See the way it shifts to the left? Four it's, drums. It's, and it's also the way the transmission was done. Of course. So I looked at a video on YouTube because I thought we could correct that with an alignment. And they said, no, that's the way it's built. So you hold that steering wheel with two hands, but you keep your thumbs on the steering wheel because if course, you hit a bad course. bump, it's going to jerk you, you're going to lose your thumb. Well, you know, you got to be, uh, 
You gotta know how to drive one of these, that's for sure. Well, I watched a lot of videos and I'm learning. This is crazy, man. I bought the uh, uh, coveralls. Yeah. I bought some goggles. Okay. And I wear my gla reading glasses. Okay. And I went under the Jeep to try and grease it a bit. And I got a grease gun and I was learning so, a little bit about maintenance. Well, the funny thing is, when you're wearing your reading glasses, okay, and then you put on these goggles, it makes everything look bigger. This little spider came down from under the Jeep. It looked like a tarantula. I let go a scream, lift up my head, bind it on the underside of the Jeep, started to swear. My wife came into the room, I said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, that spider was so big, and we found it. It was as big as the end of a pencil. <laughs> but those goggles really blew it up. <laughs> The sound of the engine, the sound of the transmission, the sound of the exhaust. Everything, everything. It's everything all together. It's what so unique. You know it's unique to this vehicle. You know it. So I was told, just drive it every day and you'll maintain the life of it. That's the way it is. That's so, what it was designed for. So I try and go out every drive day it. now. Drive yeah. it. Why not enjoy it? I they guess, don't make, you know they don't make them anymore, you know. That. <laughs> yeah. That's done. That's all history. The only thing is I won't drive it in heavy rain because we slide off the road apparently. Oh, of course. They're non-directional tires. They're made for mud and fields and ditches. Off-road. Yeah. I was told if I want to drive it in the city with rain, you need regular city tires. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. The other thing I do is I brake when I go into a corner. I was warned that if I go around the corner too fast, you can actually roll it. You, yeah, I'm sure. It's a tall vehicle. It sits, I just love this. I love it. <laughs> you want to drive it again? I'll turn it around. You can bring it back. Okay, bring it in the corner. Yeah. I'll bring it back. Okay. Neutral, the handbrake. Well, next year you're going to help me do the brakes. Okay. The master brake cylinder and the four brakes. So it doesn't really work. Hold the brake there. I'll come there. Okay. okay you got I'll it? take it. Okay. okay. I got it. I got it. One more time. Here we go. No doors. No power steering. No power brakes. No nothing. Did they come automatic transmission? Oh, <laughs> this is just pure enjoyment. It is. It's a piece of history. Lift, Let's go. Yeah, lifting history. I think of all the men and the women who maintain the vehicle over 71 years. Wow. What an enjoyable ride. This is totally different yeah. from what I'm used to. Totally different. I'd love to be able to hear the stories it could tell us. This is something. Thank you. You're welcome.